When humanity was physically separated into two sexes, man and woman still carried the reflection of their creator. Within every male still exists a female aspect, and within every female exists a male aspect. In this meaning, Adam and Eve symbolize the energetic physiology of the individual. Adam and Eve as polarized energy are represented in the ancient symbol of the Caduceus, associated to the Greek god Hermes. The symbol of the Caduceus is visible in the records of many ancient cultures from all over the world. The two serpents symbolize the masculine and feminine energy channels that wind up the spinal column. They are energetic, not physical. Their root is Yusad, the foundation, the sexual organs, and they are fed by the sexual energy. These two channels of energy are called Ida and Pingula in Sanskrit, and in esoteric Christianity, they are called Adam and Eve. The two serpents wind up the spinal column of the physical body. The spine is often symbolized by a staff or a rod. The spine is the staff of the master and the central column of the human temple. The column stands upon the foundation stone, the yasad, the sexual energy. The spine has 33 vertebrae, symbolized by the life of Jesus and by the 33 degrees of the Freemasons. On either side of this rod, the spinal column, are two serpents. Pingala is the masculine aspect, Adam, Solar. Ida is the feminine aspect, Eve, Lunar. Man is the active force, the reflection of God the Father. Woman as the receptive force, the reflection of God, the Mother. And sex is the force that brings them together. These are the three forces that give rise to all of creation, and this is the foundation of the universal symbol of the Trinity. In Christian tradition, it is called Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Jewish tradition, it is called Kether, Chokma, and Bina. In Hindu tradition, it is called Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. In Egyptian tradition, it is called Osiris, Horus, and Isis. The Trinity is a unity of three three that expresses one, but in order to create, this one divides itself in two, male and female. This is the mystery of the Holy Spirit, the fire of God. Symbolized in India as Shiva and Shakti, the creative and destructive power of God. The force that powers creation on all levels of existence is sexual energy. Sexual energy is symbolized by fire, water, and by light. The sexual fire is the power of creation. In the tradition of alchemy, the sexual energy is symbolized by mercury. All of life is born of the sexual waters. The power of creation harnesses the force of that electric energy implies a great responsibility. To indulge in the fruit of sexuality means to spill the sexual energy, the orgasm to taste the divine energy that illuminates the soul in order to feel a physical sensation. And so the energy used to maintain the physical and spiritual vitality of the individual is expelled through the orgasm. Adam and Eve as a symbol of men and women of the ancient past ate the fruit of the tree of knowledge or the secret of sexuality. They abused the sexual energy in their own bodies by having the orgasm and therefore they broke the most fundamental rule they had been given. It is very important that the tremendous energy that gives mankind the ability to create be used efficiently because it is connected to the same energetic force that sustains the individual's own vitality. It is well known that sexual energy is related to the health of our psyche as well as our physical bodies. This is why the fruit of the tree of knowledge was forbidden to eat. Before the abuse of the tree of knowledge, sex was treated with the utmost respect and the orgasm was unknown to mankind and unnecessary. Husband and wife joined in a sexual act according to the laws given to them. At the time, humanity only knew goodness until eating the forbidden fruit and the discovered animal desire which always leads to suffering and pain. This is the Pandora's box of Greek mythology which when open releases the agents of evil into the world, fear, pride, and shame. By eating the forbidden fruit, Adam and Eve learn desire. From this moment, right and wrong is filtered through the need to feel pleasure and avoid suffering. And Jehovah Elohim said, Behold, the man has become one of us, to know good and evil. Humanity had already known goodness, innocence and purity, 
Now humanity also knew evil, shame, pain, and fear. Now humanity knew what the Elohim knew already, that desire leads to suffering. Desire is craving, and craving is suffering. Desire always leads to suffering. This is the core message that is found in every great religion. The slave of desire is a slave of sin, suffering, and death await them. Through the abandonment of desire, the deathless state is realized. Stripped of their connection to the divine, Adam and Eve as symbols of humanity were cast out of Eden to wander in the wilderness of suffering and ignorance. By using the sexual force to stimulate desire, the fire of Eve became inverted, flowing in the opposite direction. The serpent fell, forming the famous tale of Satan, stimulating the seven inverted virtues, the seven capital sins. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Eden exists within every soul that is united with God. Expelling the light of God from within expels the soul from Eden and creates a great emptiness. To replace the void created by this disconnection with God, mankind created civilizations, ideas, and religion, seeking material wealth, power, and sexual satisfaction. A desire for sensation became the new God and only served to further degenerate mankind until man was left with only a trace of the divine inside. When humanity willingly expelled the sexual energy, it was simultaneously cast out of Eden. The paradise of the fourth dimension and mankind descended into the wilderness. The physical world, this third dimension, the world of suffering. He drove the men out and stationed east of the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve were cast out of Eden. However, the gateway back to Eden and the Tree of Life were never closed or locked. The entrance to the Garden of Eden is the same door through which Adam and Eve were departed. Humanity is not locked out of Eden, but a carol beam is left to grant the entrance only to those who have earned the right to return, and only those who have conquered the tempting serpent have earned the right. If you bring forth what is within you, what is within you will save you. But if you do not bring forth what is within you, what is within you will destroy you. The serpent is within. The serpent is sexual fire. It is a very powerful atomic energy with a polarity that can create or destroy. This energy is so powerful, the individual requires great willpower in order to overcome the lure of the serpent. The temptation of this serpent is through material pleasure and self-edification. This tempting aspect of the serpent is Lucifer, or what in Hebrew is called Shaitan, the enemy because shaitan is the fiery serpent that is ignited and empowered through the sexual act. It is always tempting mankind to know, to have the sexual connection. The serpent itself is power. The individual decides through their actions whether it will be a power of good or evil. It is the difference between obeying the serpent or controlling it. The lesson contained in the story of the serpent is that only those with the strength of will to control the cravings of their mind can raise the energetic serpent to transform themselves from intellectual animals into true human beings. It is necessary to conquer the dragon that lies within, as religions and mystical traditions have told us for endless ages. The dragon is one's own lust, passion, anger, pride, fear, and envy which explains the Hydra of Seven Heads and the Medusa. The deceptions of the serpent are legion. The great heroes and gods always have the serpent under their power, and it is the serpent that protects them and conquers their enemies. The positive serpent protects, while the negative serpent must be dominated and conquered. In contrast to the serpent that tempted Adam and Eve, causing them to fall, there is a serpent of Moses, who commanded its power and conquered the Egyptians, accomplishing great miracles. The Egyptians had degenerated into black magic, and Moses appeared to deliver the true teachings. Moses needed to free the people of Israel from Egypt. Egypt represents the degenerated mind of man, and the Pharaoh is the tyrant that jealously rules over this man-made civilization of material power and desire. 
Moses was told to take the rod, the spinal column, the tree of life in his own body, and it became the serpent, the serpent of the Kundalini. Only the positive serpent, under the service of God, can free the soul from suffering. This is clearly represented in Egyptian art. Sex is the natural function of the human being, but only sex as performed under the guidance of divine will. Sex is not only important for spiritual advancement, it is a necessity. It is through sexual energy that the vehicle of the human soul is born. This is self-evident in those who seek happiness in sex. As of any desire of the mind, sexual desire can never be satisfied. Desire is never satisfied by the enjoyment of lust, just as fire surely increases the more one gives it fuel. The kingdom in Hebrew is Malkith, the kingdom. This is the first sephra on the tree of life. It is where the real work physically begins as man and woman. Humanity left Eden as a couple, and as a couple they must return. The couple that must work together in order to reach perfection, rather than feeding their own lust, they can restore their inner Garden of Eden, the fallen serpent, and from there, they may then raise the serpent of the Kundalini. They can illuminate the tree of life, which exists within the human body, the spinal column, and they can create divine light within themselves and return to the direct knowledge of their own inner garden.